Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'll be painting an entire Tyranid army themed around the protomolecule hybrids from my favourite TV show, The Expanse. There's a sneak peek. Keep watching until the end of the video, where you have an opportunity to buy these models too. The models I painted were the Swarm Lord, a Hive Tyrant, a Trigon, Old One Eye, 9 Carnifex, 3 Dimacaron, 14 Warriors, a Brood Lord, 25 Gene Stealers, and 3 Hive Guard. That's around 3,500 points of models. Old One Eye was made using the Forge World Stone Crusher Carnifex with Wrecker Claws kit, just to make it stand out. The three Dimacarons are also Forge World models too, and as you can see, they are bloody massive. Before starting any project, I always paint a quick test model to get the technique, process and colours sorted. I'm using crackle paint on these models, and in my test I discovered having a base of varnish underneath helped the crackle paint to adhere properly to the bare plastic and stopped it flaking off. I used Martian Iron Earth for my crackle effects. The thicker you apply it, the bigger the cracks, and the thinner you apply it, the smaller the cracks. The proto molecule acts like a mushroom spore, spreading in the air and in contact with beings infecting them and taking over their bodies. The flesh cracks and the blue molecule glows from within. I applied the crackle paint thickly on the edges and thin towards the middle areas. I also tried out this AK interactive crackle paint, and it wasn't as good, so stick with the Games Workshop stuff. I varied how much crackle paint I put on each model. The next step is to prime it black. One, two, three, of it! I made sure the primer covered the entire model so no red paint was showing through. This added a lot of texture to the boring armour plates. Next step is because of flesh. Just clear that up for you so you can see it. I sprayed over with kids of flesh in a zenithal highlight ensuring to leave some of the black in the crevices. So you're spraying from above down onto the model. While doing this step, my airbrush decided to break and stop working. Reminder that you don't need an airbrush to do this technique, it just makes it quicker. So I placed an order for a new one and waited. The models look pretty cool, just like this, and the cracks are all visible, and have bonded strongly to the models. A week later, my new airbrush arrived, and I got to work on the Caribou Crimson step. With this wash, you want to aim for the crevices and edges of the armour plates. any folds in any legs and any arms and also the folds in the armour. This could all be done with normal paintbrush too and the raised areas could be painted over again with dry brushing. Again, I'm only using the airbrush for speed. I also varied how much Karaberg was applied to give variation across all the models. I sprayed it around the edges and on the folds of the wings. They look so cool already. 
this combination of flesh colour and purple really add to the hybrid look. This is just three colours, black, flesh and purple. Next step, I decided to use Stormhouse Silver to paint all the teeth. It really adds to the alien, weird, science experiment look. Then onto white highlights. I use a scrap piece of paper to stop overspraying onto the models. I highlight the claws and any of the vents, if you would call these vents. And also the eye sockets with white. This is going to form the base of our glow effect. On the Dimer K runs, there is a lot of vents and areas to add blue to. It's a beast of a model. I'll just speed this up a bit. Boop! Then onto a thematic blue contrast paint. This is sprayed onto all of the white areas. So any white made the blue really bright and the overspray around the areas with less white on blends in with the purple and flesh. When doing this, any areas that weren't blue enough I just went over and did a second coat. You can really control how blue it is. They're really starting to look like protomolecule infected tyranids now. If you haven't seen the TV show, you should really give it a chance. Fifty poppity boop. It's really effective, simple technique to get them looking this good. And as I said, you could just use a normal brush. You don't have to use an airbrush to get this effect. See the transformation on this time of K run, it's absolutely amazing. But we're not finished. After the blue highlights, I went on to a blue oil wash. I found this paint at my local craft store. It's a very vibrant blue, but it also dries matte, as in it's not shiny. I used it on the test model first. The theory is that the oil will wash into the crevices and mimic a blue glow from underneath. If you haven't used oil wash before, it's amazing, you should give it a go. It's so simple to make. Just get a little jam jar like this. Squirt a big dollop of it in there. Get a little slug. And get some white spirit. just put a bit in. Don't have to measure it, I just guess, just put a, just put a good look in it. And then put the lid on, just shake it. Make sure all the bits have mixed into the spirit.
and it should look like this. Make sure you use a synthetic brush, be this consistency. If the oil's too thin, just add some more paint. If it's too thick, add a bit more spirit. So what I did is I used the oil and blot it onto the models, and aiming for all these crevices and cracks that we've used the crackle paint on. And all you need to do is ensure you wick away any excess. I went over all the um, glow effect areas as well. You could also varnish your models before this stage if you're worried about the spirit destroying your paint job. But I left these to dry for quite a while before I did this. Just make sure you wick away any of the excess. And when it dries, it looks like this. How freaking cool is that? And it's easy to do. You can see it's filled all the cracks in the paint and given an impression the model is glowing from underneath. Here on this uh, Carnifex carapace, it's actually filled in some crevices on the surface. This Dimacaron, I put it in between all the ribs on the tail and all the cracks and crevices here. Bibbidi boop boop Look at the difference it's made on this. Such a transformation. All the cracks are filled and glowing. Looks particularly awesome on the claws. It looks like it's straight out of a horror film. Oh, sci-fi horror. You could also do further highlights with white oil, but I don't think it's needed. It looks bright enough. And also with this technique it's quite cool, if you've got any residue that you don't want you can just clean it up with pure white spirit and a brush. You'd have to do this within the first uh, few hours or so, because the oil um, starts to dry after that. The footage really isn't doing justice on how cool these look in person. It's really ominous. So the next stage will be to do the basing. I decided that these nids are test subjects of the protomolecule experiments, and so have escaped a research station on a red planet. The Dimacarons have industrial themed bases, so I thought this would fit perfectly. Bibbidi bobbidi boop, took them off their bases. I was sent an early copy of the Cube Hobby Vault to test, which will be launched in 2022. There's a link to the Kickstarter in the video description, so sign up to be notified when it launches. It's such a cool product and concept. So inside each cube will be highly detailed modular basin bits, 
allowing you to make realistic bases and dioramas. So you can use them however you like. You'll have a selection of bits that fit with each other in different combinations and as you can see here, they're very detailed. The cube will have a lot more options when it launches and includes enough bits to base a reasonably sized army. These mushrooms immediately inspired me and made me think of bioluminescent mushrooms and also the protomolecule, which acts like mushroom spores. So I painted a test base, yellow glowing mushrooms over blue earth, very alien and weird. For the basing, I used some Geek Gaming Scenics Base Ready Mars Terrain. Say that 10 times fast. There's some fish tank filters. Some Gamers Grass Tufts. And some Industrial Bits. So I clipped off some tank filters, some rocks, some other bits. I stuck them down to the bases and sprayed them brown. I applied the Mars Ready basing and painted the mushrooms blue. plans that the mushrooms would be growing from under the rocks and other basing parts. So I mimic the same blue glow that's on the Tyranids on the bases in the exact same way. So white base and then athematic blue over the top. And then stuck the mushrooms underneath the rocks and other basing parts. then applied some tufts and then stuck the models down. I then used some red pigment powder to blend the hooves and feet of the models onto the Martian ground. And then there you go, a simple thematic and narrative base. And that's the army finished. I present to you High Fleet Protomolecule. This army took around 27 hours to paint. I think you'll agree it looks so cool. It's now also listed on eBay for sale. I've split it up into separate units so that people can buy whatever units they want. If you like the video, please comment, like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but helps me out. Let me know what you think of this video and the TV series down in the comments. I love reading the comments and feedback and try to reply to all of them. Maybe even just let me know what you're planning on painting over Christmas. And if you want to support the channel further, please consider supporting me on Patreon or by using any of the affiliate links in my description below. And thank you to my current patrons, you absolute legends. Particular thanks to my latest patron, AB. Hail to you, champion. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, check out my others.